Uh, I'm wondering how you see uh, the role of our educational system, what it's doing right now, what forces are driving it, and what constraints are on it, and how should it operate? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I quoted the uh, Trilateral Commission view of the educational system, uh, namely it's a system of indoctrination of the young. And I think that's correct. It's a system of indoctrination of the young. That was the way the liberal elites regard it, and they're more or less accurate. Uh, so the educational system is supposed to train people to be uh, obedient, conformist, uh, not think too much, uh, do what you're told, stay passive, don't cause any crises of democracy, don't raise any questions, and so on. That's basically what the, what the uh, system is about. Uh, even the fact that the system has a lot of stupidity in it, I think, has a function. You know, it means that people are filtered out for obedience. If you can guarantee lots of stupidity in the educational system, you know, like stupid assignments and things like that, you know that the only people who will make it through are people like me and like most of you, I guess, who are willing to do it no matter how stupid it is because we'll, we want to go to the next step, you know. So you may know that this assignment is idiotic and the guy up there couldn't think his way out of a paper bag, but you'll do it anyway uh, because that's the way you get to the next class uh, and, and you want to make it and so on and so forth. Well, there are people who don't do that. You know, uh, there are people who say, I'm not going to do it, it's too ridiculous, you know. Uh, those people are called behavioral problems or uh, something like that. They end up in the principal's office or in the streets or selling drugs or whatever. And all of this is a technique for uh, selection for obedience. And I, have, I don't know how to prove this, but I have a feeling that when you go to the elite universities, you find more obedience and conformity, probably because you're getting the students who were better able to do it. You know. uh, well, all of that is functional. That's the way it works. But it, and it works right through graduate school. I mean, if you, it, there are, by the time you get to graduate school, it's already a little more varied because some real contradictions develop in the system. The problem is that you can't have progress this way. You know, now, especially in the sciences and engineering, that's a problem because the corporations need science and engineering. You know, if you don't have innovation, you're really in trouble. So they have to encourage creativity and independence because you can't get anywhere if you just copy what somebody told you. You have to be challenging things all the time, challenging everything, you know, uh, and thinking new thoughts and so on. And there you got a real contradiction. Uh, it's hard to train people to be creative and challenging and so on, and yet to ensure that somewhere else in their lives they're conformist and obedient and never think. So you have problems. That's a serious problem in Japan, incidentally. Uh, we think of Japan as this tremendous superpower, but that's very misleading. Uh, Japan, for example, is very poor in science, for example, and they're aware of it. And part of the reason is it's, such, it's, part, of the, it's part of the same thing that makes them good workers, obedient workers. It's a very obedient society, very deferential and conformist society. And one effect of that is that you, you know, there are real constraints against independent, free thinking, and you see it in the sciences very clearly. Uh, the, uh, but it's a problem here too. So there are those contradictions. When you get to graduate school, they're beginning to show up. They show up much less in the ideological subjects, because there it doesn't matter so much if people have, you know, there isn't, it, it, profits aren't made by historians having original ideas about the French Revolution, so they can have conventional ideas. And that means that the, the pressure to try to support innovation and freedom is much less, and the, profession, the pressures for conformity, on the other hand, are much greater because in the ideological subjects it begins to be dangerous if people think the wrong thoughts. It's not so dangerous if they have new ideas about physics. Uh, so, so you get, but nevertheless, you, know, you, there's, you begin to get a little flux in the system by the time you get to graduate school. And even at lower levels you find it. I mean, there's, you know, there are teachers who do stimulate thought and sometimes they get away with it. And uh, all the way through, uh, you know, if, you, if people are learning things, you just, you just can't control, you can't make them just regurgitate what they heard. Now, there's a lot of pressure to turn the schools into the Marine Corps, uh, and there's a lot of support for it. Uh, for example, there's this bestseller last couple of years by Alan Bloom. Uh, that was all over the supermarket, closing the American mind. Yeah, which every, you know, huge bestseller supermarket racks, which is where I read it, and things like that. Uh, well, you take a look at what he's saying, uh, and, and there was plenty, you know, a lot of enthusiastic uh, accolades for it and so on. Uh, he was saying that 
a couple of us smart guys will decide what the great thoughts are, uh, and every student will memorize them, and that's education. Okay. Well, you know, I mean, that's a way to turn people into pure automata. I mean, even if they happen to pick the great thoughts, uh, there is no way less likely to get anybody to think about those thoughts than to make that the curriculum. That finishes them off, you know. Uh, uh, but, uh, and I think that's the purpose, really. I mean, the purpose is just to impose authority, you know. Here's the great thoughts, all this other stuff is rubbish, just learn those and you're okay. I'll pick them, you memorize them. That's basically the line. Uh, now, of course, that's, that's the opposite of education. I mean, that's the way you study Talmud or something like that. Uh, but uh, it's very popular, and I think it reflects the same concern over the crisis of democracy. In fact, Alan was it Bloom himself was extremely, the incident that really got to him was a case in Cornell, where he was a professor, where some black students took over one of the, one of the buildings and he, was, he said that's just like the Nazis, you know, it's back to the Nazis. He has a whole business about the Nazis and so on and so forth. Well, you take a look at what happened in that. He doesn't tell you what he thought. The, and he says the faculty capitulated, you know, just like Heidegger capitulated to the Nazis and so on. Uh, what actually happened, if you look back, is that there were real grievances. Undoubtedly, the students shouldn't have done what they did and go into the building with guns and so on. But it was settled very amicably. It was settled amicably. amicably. Nobody was killed. Uh, the grievances were to some extent dealt with, and the net result was better than it was before. Well, he didn't tell you what he thought they should have done, but it's sort of implicit. I mean, uh, I guess they should have bombed the place or something like that. Uh, but uh, that's what really set him off. And in general, what set many people off was the, the you know, the, the 60s are now described in the literature as if it was a time when students were running around burning libraries and you know, destroying the foundations of civilization and so on. What was actually going on is they were asking questions. You know, they were raising questions. They were uh, looking into things that people hadn't looked into before. They were not just obedient. And from the point of view of a lot of the faculty, that's equivalent to burning the buildings. You know, you can't even make that small distinction. You can't make that. Uh, and uh, there's pressure to turn the schools back to the days when you didn't have to worry about those things, like disobedient students asking questions about things that you didn't tell them to think about and so on.